Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcin Hruschel. I am the president of the Institute of New Europe, and I have a pleasure to welcome you at the conference Free Seas Initiative Key Opportunities and Challenges for Economic Cooperation. That is a part of a public task financed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland within the Grand Competition Public Dip Diplomacy 2022. I would like to welcome especially the representatives of diplomatic missions to Poland with His Excellency Ambassador Andreas Stadler of, of Austria, uh, inter alios, but also Minister Veronika Ionesco from uh, Romania, also representatives of other diplomatic missions uh, from Estonia, uh, Hungary, and other FRISIS countries. Uh, also representatives of the Chancellery of the President of the Republic of Poland and Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, let me also welcome our experts from the FRISIS participating states and all the distinguished guests. So, the main re reason we decided to organize this conference was the situation that the Free Seas Initiative has found itself after the Russian aggression on Ukraine and some visible signals of a new momentum for this regional format of cooperation focused on infrastructural projects. And these signals were visible especially at the, uh, this year's summit in Riga. So with these new circumstances, we would like to identify what are the main barriers to strengthen economic cooperation within the FRISIS format and attract more foreign investors to regionally oriented projects in energy, transport and digital sector. Uh, we will start with the presentation of the report Financing the Future on how to boost investments from the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, China, Japan, Korea, and the Nordic States within the FRISIS initiative projects. And then we will proceed with two panels. So the first panel will be opportunities and challenges for economic cooperation within the FRISIS initiative with guest experts from the participating states. And the second panel, opportunities to invest and get involved in the FRISIS projects with experts and co-authors of the report. Thank you once again for joining us uh, today. And I give the floor to Mrs. Julita Wilczek from our institute, who is the main editor of the report and will present its main assumptions and co conclusions. And the report itself will be available uh, in the forthcoming days at our website. So you are all welcome to read it and uh, have a look at it. Thank you very much. Welcome once again, and I give the floor to Mrs. Yulita. Thank you. Um, the report will be in English, so it will be easy, easy, um, easily accessible for everyone. Um, and as Martin said, it will be published um, in the first half of December. So the title was already introduced in this uh, report. We are trying to figure out what uh, the region can do better to attract more foreign investment uh, to the region. Um, as it's uh, well known, the region has a extensive infrastructural needs that need to be financed with the use of uh, foreign investors because the region itself does not have that much uh, financing opportunities. And um, also one of the reasons is that uh, the region would like to um, be less dependent on the EU funds in that matter. So um, in this report, we have five chapters dedicated to seven countries uh, where we analyze what's the current state of investment of uh, individual states um, uh, discussed in the chapter in the region. Uh, we also see what kind of uh, opportunities there are for the region to attract more investment from that countries. We also try to pinpoint the main challenges that exist today that prohibit more uh, investment in the region. 
And um, finally, we are trying to give some recommendations specific to these countries. So in the first chapter, uh, we analyzed the United Kingdom and the United States. And in this chapter, the, I think the most important conclusion would be to create some kind of, of common cooperation center, of a center that could be uh, a common contact point for a bigger countries like the United Kingdom and the United States because they often uh, point out that it's very difficult for them to discuss uh, investment opportunities with each individual country in the region. Uh, we also uh, highlight that um, even though the current inv Russian invasion on Ukraine is a, is a serious problem from the investment perspective, it can be also used as an opportunity for the region to encourage um, investment from the US and UK because they uh, it aligns with their political uh, agenda as well. In the second chapter, we focus on Germany, which already is the biggest uh, trading partner for many um, of the countries of the region, and it's also one of the biggest investor in the region. Uh, we point out that from the German, uh, from the perspective of German investors, uh, the biggest problem is uh, lack of stability and lack of high returns in the region. But uh, we um, we conclude that they can be encouraged to invest more because uh, uh, we have some common infrastructural challenges that then can be combined. And there, and our gain is also German gain because it's our neighbor uh, and they can also benefit from better infrastructure in the region. In the third chapter, we focus on China, which is a very, I would say, controversial investor at the moment. And it's not really welcomed anymore by um, every country in the region, but still China has a very, uh, still a growing potential to invest. And we discuss whether it can be um, increased, even though the relationships currently are um, quite strained. In the fourth uh, chapter, we focus on South Korea and Japan, which uh, from the perspective of the region, we consider a very similar type of investor. Uh, in this uh, chapter, we, uh, in particular, uh, recommend building stronger and longer relationship with these investors because of the different uh, cultural um, cultural needs of those investors. They 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 are not so ready to jump on the any investment opportunity as we uh, we would hope. And in the final chapter, we uh, bring out the potential of the northern countries, which is still very underutilized in the region. We focus mostly on Sweden, uh, Denmark, and, um, and Norway in this chapter. And uh, one of the most important conclusions is that um, sustainability of investment is a key factor for Nordic, you know, Nordic investors. And we think that uh, it's not yet highlighted enough. It's not spoken enough, especially in English, uh, when it comes to uh, discussing the investment opportunities in our region. Um, and uh, the report in general, um, it's not very in-depth um, uh, analy analysis. It's uh, it's not uh, research to end all research on this topic. So uh, we would probably like to do more, uh, write more about this in the future. But we think it's a great start to discussing that we should approach uh, each uh, potential country from a different point of view, from uh, to highlight different aspects of our. Uh, investment opportunities, which at the moment uh, we believe it's not really happening. Thank you, and uh, I encourage you to download the report. As I mentioned, it will be um, available um, early December. Thank you.